The Arab-Israeli conflict is one of the oldest in the history of the Middle East. How did the Third Arab-Israeli War shape the legacy of the region? Hello and welcome to UPSC History View. Today, let's learn about the Six-Day War. The Six-Day War, also called the June War or the Third Arab-Israeli War or Naqsa, a brief war that took place on June 5th to 10th, 1967, was a third of the Arab-Israeli wars. Israel's decisive victory included the capture of the Sinai Peninsula, the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, the Old City of Jerusalem, and Golan Heights. The status of these territories subsequently became a major point of contention in the Arab-Israeli conflict. Let's learn about the background and the escalation. Prior to the start of the war, attacks conducted against Israel by fledgling Palestinian guerrilla groups based in Syria, Lebanon and Jordan had increased, leading to costly Israeli reprisals. In November 1966, an Israeli strike on the village of Al Samu in the Jordanian West Bank left 18 dead and 54 wounded and, during an air battle with Syria in April 1967, the Israeli Air Force shot down six Syrian MIG fighter jets. In addition, Soviet intelligence reports in May indicated that Israel was planning a campaign against Syria and although inaccurate, the information further heightened tensions between Israel and its Arab neighbors. Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser had previously come under sharp criticism for his failure to aid Syria and Jordan against Israel. He had also been accused of hiding behind the United Nations Emergency Force, or UNEF, stationed at Egypt's border with Israel in the Sinai. Now, however, he moved to unambiguously demonstrate support for Syria. On May 14, 1967, Nasser mobilized Egyptian forces in the Sinai. On May 18th, he formally requested the removal of the UNEF stationed there. And on May 22nd, he closed the Gulf of Aqaba to Israeli shipping, thus instituting an effective blockade of the port city of Elat in southern Israel. On May 30th, King Hussein of Jordan arrived in Cairo to sign a mutual defense pact with Egypt placing Jordanian forces under Egyptian command. Shortly thereafter, Iraq too joined the alliance. Let's learn about the main events of the war. In response to the apparent mobilization of its Arab neighbors, early on the morning of June 5th, Israel staged a sudden preemptive air assault that destroyed more than 90% Egypt's air force on the tarmac. A similar air assault incapacitated the Syrian air force. Without cover from the air, the Egyptian army was left vulnerable to attack. Within three days, the Israelis had achieved an overwhelming victory on the ground, capturing the Gaza Strip and all of the Sinai Peninsula up to the east bank of the Suez Canal. An eastern front was also opened on June 5th when Jordanian forces began shelling West Jerusalem, disregarding Israel's warning to King Hussein to keep Jordan out of the fight, only to face a crushing Israeli counterattack. On June 7th, Israeli forces drove Jordanian forces out of East Jerusalem and most of the West Bank. Photos and films of Israeli troops taking control of the old city of Jerusalem have proved to be some of the war's iconic images. The UN Security Council called for a ceasefire on June 7th that was immediately accepted by Israel and Jordan. Egypt accepted the following day. Syria held out, however, and continued to shell villages in northern Israel. On June 9th, Israel launched an assault on the fortified Golan Heights, capturing it from Syrian forces after a day of heavy fighting. Syria accepted the ceasefire on June 10th. Let's learn about the aftermath of the war and the legacy. The Arab countries' losses in the conflict were disastrous. Egypt's casualties numbered more than 11,000, 
with 6,000 for Jordan and 1,000 for Syria, compared with only 700 for Israel. The Arab armies also suffered crippling losses of weaponry and equipment. The lopsidedness of the defeat demoralized both the Arab public and the political elite. Nasser announced his resignation on June 9th but quickly yielded to mass demonstrations calling for him to remain in office. In Israel, which had proved beyond question that it was the region's preeminent military power, there was euphoria. The Six-Day War also marked the start of a new phase in the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. Since the conflict created hundreds of thousands of refugees and brought more than one million Palestinians in the occupied territories under Israeli rule. Months after the war, in November, the United Nations passed UN Resolution 242, which called for Israel's withdrawal from the territories it had captured in the war in exchange for lasting peace. That resolution became the basis for diplomatic efforts between Israel and its neighbors including the Camp David Accords with Egypt and the push for a two-state solution with the Palestinians. Thank you for listening to this discussion on the Six-Day War. For more such discussions, get the UPSC Practice app from the App Store.